Recording in progress. Okay, cool. So today we're gonna go over the weekly, uh, we're just gonna go over the market cycles, weekly, daily, intraday cycles. And um, we're also gonna go over the schematics, how to properly use them. Um, and these are 40 schematics, they're not, they're not like white cost schematics. Um, so this is gonna help you kind of, kind of see what the potential move is uh, in the market for that day. Okay. And um, this is something that like, after a while, it'll be kind of ingrained into the back of your head. Um, and then when you use our patterns, which is in the next lesson, um, when you use that in conjunction with the cascade, which is the schematics, that's what we call it. Uh, and in conjunction with the weekly cycle and daily cycles, um, you can increase your probabilities by a lot. Okay, so let's get into this. Um, let me get into the presenter mode real quick. Okay. So our first schematic um, is called a bullish cascade. Okay, so this is when you want to be bullish on, on a pair or when you are bullish on a pair. Um, and the way we look at this is, so the market likes to kind of trick you into thinking uh, going in one direction. And we'll go over the charts after we go over the uh, slideshow. Um, so what it'll do is it'll tend to create a pattern um, that looks bullish, but then ends up being bearish, which is simply a pullback, all right? So anytime we see, let's say on a daily time frame, the market is going down, we wanna go into that market uh, as it's pulling back, okay? So while everybody else is thinking like, oh, this is the bottom, this is the floor. Um, no, we just know that that's just gonna be a, re a retracement. And we can look at the schematic to see if we, can, if we should get into that trade or not, okay? <clears throat> so this is our uh, bullish type one schematic. As you can see, it looks like a bear market, but then bam, we get a move up. So what happens in the bullish type one schematic? So we have the Asian range high, Asian range low, right? We have our Frankfurt session manipulation and then into London, we take out Asian low right here. Then what happens in London? We have a retracement, gapping hour, price moves down, stop hunts London into New York, into a POI to the left, okay? POI is something that I don't really use anymore because you'll know why in the uh, the next session, but a POI is just a point of interest, right? You're, you're basically where you're gonna enter the market. So I don't use like a traditional POI anymore. I use a specific type of POI, but it's not like uh, OB or anything like that. Okay, so <clears throat> so like I said, in Asian, we, we make a high, we make a low and we run the lows. Okay, so everybody else gets stopped out of the market and on that last stop hunt underneath London, we can take a trade from here and targeting Asian highs or whatever um, uh, interest level, your next interest level. So if we have a bullish uh, cascade, right? So this is bullish, we could target a bearish QM, for example. So if this was a bullish, uh, bullish QM over here, then we would be targeting QM to QM, okay? But that will be for the next lesson where, where I'll teach you guys um, the uh, QMs. My mouse is not showing. Um, can you guys see my mouse over here? Okay, so I guess I have to use it on the other screen. So yeah, so from here, from Asian high, Asian low, right? We make a high, we make a low. Frankfurt retracement into London session stopping out the Asian low, price moves and then runs London lows, okay? Um, it's a higher uh, probability of Asian highs create equal highs. So if we have liquidity built up from up here, okay, then your chances of this getting ran is a lot higher. London low is obviously taken by New York. New York trades to a POI and we're targeting the Asian high. Okay, and this is like an intraday setup. Okay. 
Okay, let's go over the bullish type two. Bullish type two, Asian range, right? Create a high, we create a low. And what gets ran first is our Asian range uh, high, right? So we have our one uh, dictated right here. Okay, so our one. Then we trade down into London. Okay, London moves, comes back down during New York, stops out the London low into a POI. And now we are targeting the London high. Okay. So you'll see that it's Asian range gets taken out first. So the Asian high gets taken out first in London, creates the low right here. And then price moves from here because most people are thinking this is a breakout. No, we're not done yet. Boom, take out everybody out of this market, enter on New York POI, and then price moves. Um, it's better to see Asian highs and lows wicked out and no candle closure above uh, and below. Okay, and for this, I use a M15 or an M30 chart, whatever's clear. So um, wicked out, no closure above uh, or below. So these are basically, it's just stop ran both sides of this market, okay? Um, we wanna see clean order flow on the decline into New York. So we just wanna see um, basically mitigation, mitigation beneath London into New York. If you don't know what mitigation is, it's just, um, it's just no, there's no uh, imbalances. Okay, so when we see no imbalances in here, uh, we know that price can move through it aggressively. Okay, and then we have trend line liquidity here. Okay. Entry is only on POI. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we have timing. Okay, because we want the aggressive move at the specific time. Okay, timing is, is very, very important. So whatever your POI is, be it a supply and demand or uh, order block or whatever, or a QM level, uh, then we can enter off that. Okay, so our bullish type three, um, so are we trading the Dow? No, this is just, this is Forex, this is Forex. And the Dow is, is different timings. And that That's the, the New York Stock Exchange opens at uh, 9.30. So it's different, it's different than the Forex where we have the New York session opening at four or uh, 7 a.m. Okay, so bullish type three is just the opposite of bullish type two, okay? It's where Asian low gets ran first and then Asian high. So it's just the complete opposite, right? So we have Asian range, price moves, takes out Asian lows first into some London type POI. Um, so for example, uh, on bullish type two or three, if London, right, trades to a POI that's, or it misses a POI, that's a great sign. So let's say you have a POI here and London missed it, okay? London misses the POI, what happens to this low? It becomes liquidity, right? This low missed our POI, missed our entry, and it comes down as a fake out, right? So people who are chasing, chasing, chasing move, they get wiped out into our POI. So we have to know that when a, but when a POI fails, it becomes liquidity. Okay, same thing. It's better to see Asian highs and lows wicked out and no candle closure above or below. Uh, this is actually a lower probability trade. Um, lower probability because this POI here that you're taking in New York could also be a part of the London POI, but it would be, for example, if we had like a M30 demand area or whatnot, um, it could go to a lower time frame POI within that POI. So if, let's say this was like an M30 POI, London taps that M30 POI, but then let's say on an M5, there's a POI left, then it can come to from New York, come to it into New York. Okay, let's move along here.
Okay, bullish type four is a London close uh, schematic. So London close within the Asian range. So our entry is actually during the entry, uh, Asian range. Now there's two variations on this where it could be in the Asian range or it could also be in the London range. So basically you're bullish type four, you have your previous day's high POI left up here. Okay, there's, there's gonna be a POI left up here. Um, during the close, we trade down into that low on the previous day for New York low POI, right? So we have a previous day's New York low, okay? After that, price moves up, trading from this, okay? So for example, if we had a type one, right? We would know that the market has taken out London, taken out New York, I'm sorry, taken out Asian, taken out London uh, into New York, and then we have that retracement at the end of New York session, right? Now, during Asian session, we'll typically see a consolidation and then Asian range will dip into that previous day's low. Okay. And at that previous day's low is where our entry is for the Asian range to come up and make the London high. Okay. So you're targeting now the POI. So think about that for a second. Okay. So the schematics. Uh, uh, flow together, right? So <clears throat> if I have a bullish type one, and then I see that the previous day left a POI at the London close session. And for me, London close in New York is like the same thing. It's like, it's, it's, I don't separate them. I keep them together. So it will be just the, the New York, it just happens later in the day. So for example, if this happens in London close, right? Um, and, I'll, and I'll explain to you guys why this this is. Um, there's a certain amount of pips that you can gain depending on the exact time that this happens. Okay. So your highest probability time that you're going to, um, that you're going to get that, that London low is 8 AM. Um, uh, so that's, uh, 8 AM New York time. Okay. So at 5 AM for me, PST, so 8 AM, um, do Asian range pips matter? Yes, they do, but we'll get into that in a minute. So um, you'll you'll depending at the time. So let's say this POI, this taps into the POI at eight. Okay, your, that's your highest probability. Okay, so from eight to nine, you have your highest probability of this happening. The further it gets drawn out, the less pips that you're most likely going to get. So let's say during London close in that in that time frame, uh, or not time frame, but that section of time, <clears throat> uh, the price trades here, but it doesn't really give you that many pips. It will give you around thirty pips, right? So at that time, you'll see that Asian range will give you that next entry here. Okay, so Asian range will give you that next entry for the bigger amount of pips to target the London previous day high in London. Okay. This will be bearish cascades. Okay, so this is just the opposing side to the bullish uh, cascades. So bullish type one, uh, or this bearish type one, it's just the opposite. Okay, so we have Asian range high and low. We make a London high, and then we trade into New York. So we stop hunt the highs into New York, into a POI. Okay, so it's literally just the opposite of what happened in the bullish scenario. <laughs> right? Um, sorry, somebody sent a message in the group. I'm sure you guys all saw that. Like I said, you know, no, nobody really teaches this. Um, a little bit of ICT, but he teaches it very complicated. Okay, so let me rephrase that. We have Asian range, high and low, stopped out by London. London gets stopped out by New York into a POI to the left. Okay, then you get your target of the Asian range low. Okay, so one, two, three. Is that all making sense so far, guys?
Okay, good. Let's go on to type two, same thing. We have Asian range high taken out, or sorry, Asian range low taken out, then Asian range high taken out, then retracement into the POI to the left above the London high. Okay, so basically it's just building liquidity here, running the liquidity, coming back down, faking the London high out for people who thought they caught the high, but nope, they don't, they don't calculate New York session into it where we run this high. Price breaks down. Same thing, we wanna look for clean order flow and um, there's also confluence here, but we'll get into the confluence uh, in the next lesson. Not in today's lesson, the next lesson. Okay. And then we have pairs type three. Same thing, it's just the opposing side. Hold on, I think I... It's the opposite of this. I don't know why this slide is duplicated, but it's the opposite of this. Okay, it's instead of Asian range low getting targeted first, it's Asian range high getting targeted first. So it's the opposite of this. Okay, I'll fix that in the in the PDF. I don't know why that happened. Okay, and then obviously we have type four. Um, so in type four, we have the previous day's New York high being traded to. And then we have the previous day's low POI being traded to. Okay, so it's the opposing side. So if you look at the bullish ones, it's just the complete opposite. Uh, previous day, uh, previous, uh, sorry, POI is created on previous days New York high to London close high. CBDR, if you guys don't know what that is, central bank dealing range, uh, it's an ICT concept. Um, basically, it's just, it's just your London close to your Asian range open uh, look, uh, session, right? It's not really a session. It's just that pretty much quiet hour. So it's building liquidity into the Asian range. And then bam, we get into our POI. We have all the lows being made and then ran into the previous day's low POI. Okay. And now I'm going to show you um days where it's going to be very hard to catch a trade which is called nrds and tds so nrds are basically narrow range days meaning the range of the day is very small and tight it's um it's mostly trading sideways and not offering you a lot of pips and then on the opposing side of that on the opposing side of that, we have trend days where the market is just going to run, like for example, EU today. So trend day is just, Asian range is just gonna keep rallying. And this typically will happen after a news catalyst. So if you look at Euro today and we had news yesterday, um, you can see that it's just been running and not really giving you entries. The goal is to enter the market before that happens, right? So before, so we're anticipating one of two things happening. We have a narrow range day right after an expansive rally. So if we had a rally during, you know, New York or whatever, um, after a news event, then we can see price just playing around here. Okay. And it's not going to really give you many pips at all. Um, or we will just have a continuous rally into the next session. Okay, so these are days that it's going to be very hard for you to catch a trade. Um, I tend to stay away from these days. I don't want anything to do with the market. Um, you'll really get eaten up. Okay. Um, details, trends, uh, trend days happen after a news catalyst offering almost no entry. Asian will rally or decline quickly and may, the main position should have been entered the previous day. Um, this is what typically happens. Uh, CBDR trend, I don't know why this says this. I think this is, this shouldn't be on here, but it's fine. I hope you guys understand what a trend day is and a narrow range day is. It's just when the market's not offering you anything. Okay, now I'm gonna pass the mic to Ivan. He's gonna talk about the manipulation hours. 
you there? I oh, hold on, let me unmute him. Yeah, I was trying to unmute. Hello, guys. Okay. All right, we're gonna talk about. Can I screen share, or are you gonna? Here, I'll just uh, control the. Uh... Or you have you have my Canva, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you can you can actually control it. I don't know okay. where it is exactly. I need to get in and all that. Right. All right. So when it comes to manipulation hours, it's mostly for intraday trading, mostly for short scalps. It doesn't have to do anything with swings. Only a tiny bit, a tiny part of this manipulation hours will have something to do with swings. I'll talk about that later on uh, trading view. But let's go over the manipulation hours now for intraday. So when it comes to manipulation hours, we know that Asia, London, New York, and sessions like that, they don't really start when they tell us they start. So we needed to find a precise way or precise timings when they actually start. Nobody's actually going to tell you that London is from there and there or New York is from that hour to that hour. You need to find on your own where they do actually, where, where the momentum happens at what, what, what particular times. So when it comes to manipulation hours, we can see there are different kind of, kind of patterns happening, different kind of things going on during uh, specific days and specific hours. We can see here on this picture over here that Asia high or Asia low usually needs to be taken out. I, I believe everybody knows about, can, can you see my mouse? They can't see my mouse. No, they can't That's see. Right. Anyways, <clears throat> you know that Asia high and Asia low needs to be taken. I don't know how many of you, uh, that's Evan's mouse, by the way. But I don't know how many of you know about Asia range. If you know about Asia range, just type one. About Asia midline, Asia high, Asia low. All right. You know it has to be taken out. So see, Asia range is something that holds liquidity. On the top and on the bottom is where liquidity is located and it needs to be taken out before it can make its own true move. Original move comes after Asia high or Asia low has been taken out. Before that, they can't move. It's just trapped liquidity that needs to be taken out. Okay, We have here on the picture with a blue box where it says manipulation hours, the first blue box is indicating us the times for a London momentum. We call it London momentum box and it has a specific times from nine to 10. 10.30 roughly, but from 9 to 10.30. The London, London Open actually starts around 8.30. Before that, there is something called, there is a Frankfurt session, but we, we'll ignore Frankfurt session now. I'll show you in trading view. But this manipulation hour, uh, no, it's my time, uh, Berlin time, from 9 to 10.30 Berlin time. I don't know your hour, uh, New York, I, I believe it's five hours you are five hours behind in New York, I think, if you're from New York. Um, if you're from Cali, then nine hours. Basically, manipulation hours, the, the blue box is from 9 to 10.30, but I'll show you on chart how actually it works quite, quite, quite good. When it comes to manipulation box in London, it, its job is to take out Asia range. The momentum will start around 8.30. Roughly around 8.30 to nine, there is a small gap. This is where they're gonna take Asia. When it comes to Frankfurt, they're gonna do the same thing. After that, where they're gonna stop and re reverse, yeah, 3 a.m. New York. Uh, where they're gonna reverse, is dependent on swing manipulation hours on a higher time frame, but I'll go through that. We can see here another thing is valid retail, retail trend line. After they have taken out the liquidity from the left during those specific times, everything becomes valid, everything. So supply and demand is valid. Uh, valid retail trend lines, uh, support and resistance, uh, I don't know, order blocks, wipe off, everything is correct. 
but they have to take the liquidity from the left during those specific times. You can literally draw a trend line and it will be respected, okay? There is another blue box at the bottom over there. That's called a New York momentum box. And that box starts around 14 uh, p.m. Sorry, two o'clock p.m. So we know that New York, they tell us New York starts around one. That is not actually correct timing for New York. New York starts around two. To be more precise, this box is from 2.30 to 16. Zero, zero, till 4 p.m. This is the correct, for me, I believe this is the most specific timings that you can look for your trade. If one side of liquidity is not taken, is it expected the other side will try to be taken, try to be taken. If, uh, how do you mean? Are, get, are they gonna take uh, Asia low and Asia high? Is that what you mean? If they didn't take it from Yes, the highest probability. You can narrow it even more, but I left some room to, for you guys to, to backtest it, to, to look at it with your own eyes. For me, you can probably narrow it more to 14.30 till 15.00. If I don't find a scalp or intraday trade between those times, there is no need, no need to take a trade for me personally. And I know that everything from that point on will be respected. <clears throat> They do have to take liquidity on the left before. They do have to take a previous Asia high or Asia low from before. Okay, we're not going to talk about day before, day before, and day before, but that particular day they have to take Asia high or Asia low. We also have uh, a red line indicating us London close. The real time for London close is 1700, not 1600, but 1700. Also, don't be fooled by 17.00. The 17.00 isn't really five, isn't really, sorry, 5 p.m. It's actually 5.10 or it can be 4.45. Okay, it doesn't have to be 5 p.m. I'll, I'll show you on TradingView, it, it, it's much easier. But you should know that London close at 5 p.m. When London close, the London will give you a reversal. London will give you a reversal from New York. You can obviously see here, New York will shoot up. London will give it a reversal, okay? 5 p.m. Berlin time. Everything I say is in Berlin time. Should I go to the next slide? Yeah. So you can see here a London, can I annotate? Um, yeah, you should be able yeah. to. Okay. okay, I got it. Everybody can see this, right? All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. We can see Asia High has been taken out, right? Asia High has been taken out. Everything will be respected from that point on. You can obviously see that, yeah? We can obviously see that Asia Low has been taken out, even though Asia low has been taken out here. This is the Asia low that has to be taken out because of there is some liquidity on the left, I believe. I saw something like some liquidity from previous day, but we don't need to talk about that now. Anyways, Asia low has been taken out. Asia high has been taken out. That's obvious. After Asia high has been taken out, London, London manipulation hours will give us a reversal. Specific hours are these ones with a box here. So everything before that, we don't need to look for a trade. There is no point to look at the trade from this times to this times. From here to actually here, we have Frankfurt open and Frankfurt close. Yeah, I'll show you on trading view. You see, it works quite, quite good. Actually, you can just trade based on this. Um, Frankfurt hours are from seven zero zero uh, to eight zero zero this is the times you need to stay away from the charts don't even bother looking at the charts this is the time they don't do anything we need to wait for them to take out frankfurt's high or frankfurt's low asia high or asia low if that doesn't happen 
like we can we've seen a few slides before the 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 days when the price is just ranging there is no really need to take a trade it's it's going to be high risk very high risk so instead of that let's just wait for price to take out asia high or frankfurt high and asia high after that you can look for reversal this is where liquidity is located we need to wait for liquidity to be taken out after liquidity is taken out look for reversal okay we can see specific times here 1430 1600 at 1430 somewhere roughly around 1430 the price will give you a strong reversal a strong momentum okay therefore the word momentum box inside of this momentum box momentum will happen okay you understand that and then obviously you can see london close i don't know the times exactly here or maybe here i'm not quite sure but you can see that this stands for new york and london needs to be respected after they have taken liquidity they will offer you a reversal no need to look yeah no need to look at entry before 1430 because they say London, they say new york starts at 13 o'clock 1 p.m so for me that isn't really true i don't i don't believe they start at 1 p.m for on at 1 p.m they're just gonna give you a fake trend they're not gonna do anything they just they're not really, really, really doing anything. They will just go down, take that out, and then they're going to continue moving up. It's, it's like a trap. They just, they, there is no momentum in it. There is no push. There's nothing. R roughly around 1430 is when they explode. From 1 to 2, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., it's, it's a fake trend line. From 2 to 3, 2.30, it's New York gap. But I'll show you on the indicator we got on trading view. Okay. Actually, I, I can switch to trading view right now if you want. Let, um, me, let me just... I was just going to go over the daily cycles and then we'll go over that all that right after to put it together. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, one second. I'm going to switch the screen. But just based on sessions, you can definitely, definitely intraday or scalp. You can definitely do that. Let me. Uh, yeah, I only trade during those specific times when it comes to scalps. For swing, it's a different story. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, daily cycles. Um, so you guys should, those schematics, those are gonna be like your daily cycle, your intraday cycles. Um, now we're gonna go into the daily cycle, okay? So typically what's gonna happen, um, and this isn't something that's that's new to like, to, to ICT, whoever comes from ICT concepts, like this has been known, okay? Um, so we have a Monday, which typically, this doesn't always happens, but typically it'll, Pretty much put a framework up for you to, to understand what the market's going to do next what the probability of something happening next okay so monday is going to typically create the higher low of the week right so here we have monday higher low of the week and then you'll have some sort of entry here but we're not going over entries today okay so higher low of the week and then we get liquidity being built on tuesday into wednesday being ran which wednesday is your midweek reversal which you get your reversal here Okay, so we always understand that Monday is typically going to create our higher low of the week. So we have high down into Tuesday's liquidity where people are thinking like, oh, we've reached bottom. We've done our stop hunt, whatever. No, there's still another day for it to get ran. And there's a POI to the left. Whoever I missed gold on yesterday's ses uh, session, which is fine. Um, I caught this sell, but I missed this. Um, anyways. So we have that Wednesday low and then that midweek reversal. We look back here, Monday high of the week, 
right? You can see Mondays right here into Tuesday, building liquidity, price drops, right? This happens on Tuesday. So typically, like I said, it's, it's typically gonna happen that way. And then from Tuesday, you get your run above Monday and then Tuesdays or Wednesdays uh, midweek reversal here into Friday close, okay? So just know that Monday and Tuesday typically gonna create higher low of the week. Wednesday and Thursday is typically going to be your midweek reversal, right? So at this point, we know we could be holding trades um, depending on the direction on higher time frame of what's going to happen, okay? And when you guys look at these charts, I want you to really, I'm gonna send you guys all the indicators that I use. Um, this is basically our weekly high and low and then our previous days high and low in between. Okay, I just want to know where I'm at in price on both of these. And typically, I'll mark out the previous day's high and low to see where we're at in that specific daily candle. Um, but look at the high and lows of the week. Okay, so this box right here, this gray box is your Asian range. And then here's your London and then New York and London close. Okay, so if we look, where is the high and lows being made? We have the low being made in New York. Okay, we have a high being made in New York. We have a high being made in London. We have a low being made in New York. High made in London, lows made in New York, okay? So we wanna take advantage of that. So for example, here, we make the low in what time frame? In New York, into what? Into a POI rally, okay? So what do we have here? Type one schematic, boom, and then retracement here. In what? New York. Okay, then from New York, what do we have? We have New York low of day. What do we have? Type four, Asian range retraces into New York, then rally. Okay, and then we get a new schematic over here. Okay, so this is how you'll be able to figure out what the market is most likely going to do next. One second, guys, I'm gonna grab something to drink, my mouth is dry. Okay, so we just need to understand um, like where we're at in that weekly cycle or that daily cycle, like where are we at in that? Okay, are we at a Monday high or are we at a Tuesday high or we're at a Monday low or a Tuesday low? Is Wednesday around the corner? What schematic is presenting itself on an intraday level on that specific day? Okay, so if, if Monday's high is over here, and then we know that we're going into Tuesday or Wednesday that we could possibly get our low of the week, right? So from here, boom, we get that New York low into the POI to the left. Um, here, if we're making a Monday high, okay, Monday high, we can get a type four here. Um, on lower time frames, this is the M30. Type four here down to New York, okay? Down into New York, New York, you get a simple retracement here and that's based off something to the left over here. Okay, now what I like to, what I like to do is I'll use an M15 and when I'm really trying to uh, like anticipate where a market could move to is I use a standard deviation model which is just a Fibonacci with uh, negative one, negative two, negative three, positive one, positive two, positive three. And I'll take the Asian range high and low and then project that out into the future. Okay, so the reason I use this uh, when I'm trying to figure out like a, a, an accurate POI to trade from. Um, so basically banks can't really, um, it's not banks, but price can't really push so far, okay? Like if, if they were to do that, our entire economic system probably would collapse, right? Um, they only could push price so far. So this kind of gives us like an ATR range of how far price can move, okay? So outside of four to five is very, very extreme level. And you typically will only get those extreme levels during a news event, okay? Um, so I like to use this to project where price is most likely headed. So this needs to stay um, above 10 and not more than 20 pips. 
for this to, to validate itself. Okay. So for example, if we are trading like this uh, agent session high to low, I can see that, okay, if I had my entry during a London high, then I can possibly be targeting a POI to the left. Let's say this POI down here, which is exactly three standard deviations away. So I know that, okay, this is most likely going to be my target and I can either close my position or take a position here. Okay. So I just use this as a confluence measure. Okay, so we can see one standard deviation exactly into the POI over here, right? So we have POI, we have our uh, Asian range deviation model with one standard deviation into the POI. So the POI lines up with the deviation, okay? POI is lining up with the deviation and we can enter a trade because now it's high confluence. We have confluence into that and then price moves. Okay, and we should be targeting this high over here, this previous day's Asian high. Okay, um, do you wanna show them the, uh, the spike candles? Did you mute yourself? Let me see. Oh, here, let me unmute you. I'm gonna let uh, Ivan share his screen real quick. I was about to say to unmute me. Uh, all right, I'm going to share my yeah. screen just a second. Allow, uh, here, I'll make you host. There you go. Share screen. Start your sharing. Again, move to mine. All right, can you see my screen? You should be able to see my screen. Yeah, I don't, oh, okay. All right, cool. So first of all, you probably noticed uh, Ev and me, as you can see in my chart, we have the same candlestick uh, colors for bearish and bullish candlesticks, right? So we use it because it's easier and it's much more simpler to find direction and you don't need to be confused with candlesticks going up and down because it doesn't, it, in reality, it doesn't really matter. Is it up or down? All you have to see is where direction is and find out better. So for us, this is much, much easier. And I would recommend everyone to try keeping the candlesticks uh, the same colors because it, it, it will make a process much easier when it comes to trading with direction. Uh, when it comes to indicator there is an indicator somebody posted in somebody stefan posted in a group and it's called 4d timings if you can find it over there put it in your pine chart and you will have exactly what i have right now of course you can modify it here you can see the settings he he made it quite 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 good you can see asia range frankfurt session you can see stock and scap sessions, everything. He made it looking quite, quite good. Before that, we were using kill zones, and this is, you can modify it. Can you hear me? Your internet connection. Yep, I can hear you. Uh, this internet is not good. All right. So when it comes to sessions, intraday trading, you can obviously see, we can, you can obviously see Asia range. As I mentioned before, Asia range has to be taken out. If Asia range hasn't been taken out, there is no point in trading. So wait for Asia, uh, Asia session to be taken out. After that, we need to wait for Frankfurt session that starts from 7 to 8 a.m. After Frankfurt has done its own job faking everybody out, we need to wait for Frankfurt to be taken out. If Frankfurt and Asia range are taken out, it will provide us a high probability of reversal. So therefore we see a London momentum box starting around nine to 10.30. From nine to 10.30, you most definitely can 
do this as a support and resistance, a trend line, whatever you want to do, all the blocks being valid, everything is valid if it's taken out. All right, this is not our entry, but we'll talk about entries later on, but just based on sessions, you can see that the, it will give you, there is a high probability it will give you a reversal. We can also see, we can also, I don't know why I can clear it, but you can also see here that we have London, uh, New York Momentum Box. New York Momentum Box starts at 14.30. Let me go on five minutes to find it easier. Five minutes, just a second, guys. Five minutes. All right. I'm not using trading views, so bear with me if I don't know how to do everything over there. Anyways, Frankfurt session taken out, Asia session taken out. After Asia session has been taken out, you can look for reversals during New York, the London Momentum Box. Starts at nine, finishes around 10.30. Even though London still is open till 5 p.m., roughly around this area over here, we are only looking for trades during this specific time. During this specific time, if liquidity hasn't been taken out, if they didn't print their candlesticks, above this area over here, that means they are, they are still gonna do us a reversal. They're still gonna go down because the candlesticks didn't take out the liquidity above. They didn't print, they didn't close above. Therefore, we'll talk about liquidity a bit later, but you can see that London's momentum box has to be respected. Obviously, there is from one to two, there is obviously to two thirty. sorry, there is a fake trend line. It doesn't do anything. Around one, there is no point to trade. Nothing, nothing really happens. Eight out of 10 times, nothing happens during one to 14.30. Around 14.30 was when we look at the trade. Like I, say, like I said last time, if you only sold here based on 14.30, you would be all right, okay? If you bought here based on London needing to take Asia high, you would still be all right, okay? On this picture, you can also see that price took Asia low, right? Once price took Asia low, once price took Asia low, roughly around five, this is where five is, this is London close, roughly around five, the price will give you a reversal. Somewhere around 5 p.m. when London close, it will give you a reversal. London's close job is to take New York's high momentum box peak, okay? So London close roughly around 5, 5.30, 4.45, it doesn't really matter. Somewhere around these areas here, the, the London close will take Asia's peak, sorry, uh, New York momentum box peak, this one, this one or this one. It doesn't matter which one, but it will take it, okay? Sometimes they leave it for next week or next day. Well, we don't need to do that now. When it comes to sessions here, you can obviously see everything planned out quite perfectly when it just, if you just observe momentum boxes. All right, let's rejoin. Let me show you as well. Previous picture. Again, I'll keep it like this. New York, sorry, Asia high, Asia low. Asia high taken by Frankfurt, Frankfurt taken by London. After that, if you're trading M1, you can still look for reversal here, even though this is a key thing here. If Frankfurt high, if Frankfurt slow, if it has liquidity and price didn't print below this liquidity, if price didn't close below the liquidity of Frankfurt slow, that means they are gonna go higher. It's pretty simple. No need to look at bearish, bullish, whatever candlesticks. 
they're all black right here and you can see they didn't print below, that means they're gonna go higher, okay? So if you bought here, you would be all right no matter what. Why is my internet unstable? Just a second, guys. All right. You can obviously see here another thing, and that's 1430. If you only bought at 1430, you would be all right. This is 1440, 1445. But you can see around 1430, you are pretty much safe. During London close, you can look for reversal. Okay, it's super simple. London close will give you reversal around 5 p.m. New York 2.30 will give you a reversal or a momentum to the upside. It, it, may, it depends on liquidity, but if you just bought or sell, you would be all right. Okay. Just take the opposite during 14.30 and you would be all right. This is this New York cap, roughly around 14.30. If you just bought, you would be all right. Let's go to another picture right here. You can see always the same thing. Frankfurt high or Frankfurt low needs to be taken out. It needs to be taken out. Asia high or Asia low needs to be taken out here before they can reverse it. Okay, this is just liquidity. This isn't POI on the lower time frame on M1. There is no POI here. We are only observing price through liquidity. There is no order blocks. I mean, there probably is some order blocks for M1 traders, but we don't look at it like that. This is where they stash their liquidity. Once they clear it out, the price will go. I'm not sure, maybe the algorithm works in that way that it needs to take the previous sessions from before. I'm not sure, but it obviously is happening. The price will take Frankfurt slow. After Frankfurt slow, you can see a reversal, right? After Frankfurt's high, you can see a reversal. Why did the price decide to reverse here? It's not because of the order block or whatever. It's because they took Frankfurt's high. Frankfurt's high is its own liquidity. Every session has its own liquidity that has to be taken out. Same thing goes with, like you can see daily open and previous yesterday's high, yesterday's low and weekly. I'll talk about that a bit later, but you can see that Frankfurt high has been taken out. They will reverse. Frankfurt's low has been taken out. They will reverse, okay? A fake trend going down 1430 they take out that fake trend and this is your true this is your true direction when it comes to timings everything before if you bought or any retail trader i don't know where's one if they, he decided to sell it here it would kick him out if this yeah, guy I, that thinks that new york opens <clears> up <throat> yeah um, can you let uh, uh, some people got uh, kicked out? Can you let them uh, in? All right, let me just. <coughs> get in. Oh, yeah. Eric, here you go, Eric. Are they in? Um, are you guys in the ones that got kicked out? I think some more people are kicked out. I don't know how they got kicked out, though. I don't know why it's lagging. Let me just. Let me just... Okay. Maybe I'm downloading something. I think they're in now. Uh, uh, all right, guys. So you can obviously see that if you're buying or selling during 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. or whatever, it's not a real direction of the market. The real direction of the market starts at 2.30. 14.30, 2.30 p.m. is the real direction of the market, okay? Somewhere around five, when London close, you can look for reversal. It's not set in stone, so don't sell it, don't buy it over here. Maybe you should wait for a confirmation before that, right? We need to take Asia range, Asia low, okay? Before we can look for reversal. Asia high or Asia low is very powerful and it needs to be taken out. There is also something called Asia midline. I don't know if, how many of you heard about Asia midline, but Asia midline is usually just 
liquidity area. This is usually where they do their volume and this is where it needs to be taken out so the market can reverse. Asia midline will sometimes, my internet is unstable, I don't know why. Asia midline can work like liquidity. You will usually see a spike and bounce. So it's kind of like support and resistance for retail traders. It will look like support and resistance for retail traders. Let me just narrow this down. Same thing happening here. You can see price taking out Frankfurt, right? This is start of the Frankfurt 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. Uh, sorry, 8 a.m. After it's been taken out, you can look for reversal, okay? Why would we sell here? It doesn't make any sense. Even though it is our time, 9, 9 a.m., even though it's 9 a.m., there is no point in selling it here. It didn't take anything. Once it's taken, you can look for your intraday trades, scops, whatever you want, but you can take advantage of all of this only based on this being taken out and looking for your perfect setup. I would probably take it from here. Anyways, then you can see <laughs> Asia high being taken out. Again, one, one to two to 230, it doesn't make any sense to take a trade. 230 is the perfect time to take any trade. Like I said, you can narrow it down to 230 to, uh, to sorry, 3 p.m. Or you can, I made a box a little bit bigger, bigger till 14 p.m., but you can probably take it somewhere around 2.30 to 3. And it was quite fine. Like you can see over, the, over these three examples I already showed, 2.30 always seems to work out. I don't know why, but something is around 2.30, okay? You can see they're building a fake trend. Take it out with a spike. This is where you look for yourselves. So roughly around five, another example a beautiful actually example of reversal where you can look for reversal after London close. After London close, happen, during London close, <laughs> its job is again to take New York peak. So it will take a New York momentum box high or New York momentum box low. Depends on the direction but it needs to be taken out. If Asia session hasn't been taken out, it needs to be taken out. You can obviously see here, Asia session low has to be taken out. What, what did we say? After New York, sorry, after Asia session high has been taken out by momentum box of London, its own supply and demand is valid. After Asia low has been taken out, its own supply and demand trend lines or the blocks it is valid. If you were wondering which ones are valid, these are the ones that are valid. They have to take liquidity to become valid. You cannot take any, I don't know, water blocks, uh, POIs, if they didn't take anything out before. Okay, They're not taking out anyone. They're not taking you or me. They don't really care about us. They are taking their own liquidity from before. I'll show you another few examples and then I'll know why this is. Okay. All right. So, where is it? Asia low, Asia high. You can always see that. Frankfurt's high, Frankfurt's low. Frankfurt's low being taken out during London Open. Starts around 8. There is a gap from 8 to 8.30, even though on the indicator you can you can modify it so you can see the gaps. You, you don't really have to, but Frankfurt slow has been taken out by, uh, sorry, Frankfurt slow has been taken out by London. After it has been taken out, you can look for reversal, okay? If price doesn't decide to, to take Frankfurt's high, if price doesn't decide to print, so the candlestick closes here, that means it's showing us the signs of rejection. That means that price will go down, okay? Even though this is too late in, in evening, but it will give you a rejection and you can look for reverse if you want to trade these hours, okay? London close, again, showing us reversal, okay? New York showing us a continuation. 
I wouldn't take anything of this until it's start somewhere around 1430 when you can look for a trade. This would be a much, much, much profitable trade than this one. Okay. But you can see it works, it works a lot of times. A lot of times, just based on sessions, you can see it happening. 1430, London close showing your reversal. Frankfurt, price didn't print above Frankfurt. It didn't take Frankfurt. That means that price is probably going to continue moving down, right? You understand that. Price doesn't print <laughs> above it. It's going to continue moving down. 1430, you can look for reversal, even though this was a weird day. And I hope you understand the Frankfurt's job. Frankfurt's job is to do nothing. For me, obviously, Frankfurt's job is nothing. It's a trap. You don't want to wake up at 7 and trade nothing, right? You're going to wait from 9.30 or you're going to wait for New York 14.30 to 16. You can obviously see, see here if you if you sold it based on 14.30, you will be all right. If you bought it based on 15.30, uh, you would be all right, okay? Even a small reversal here around these times. Frankfurt been taken out. Asia been taken out. This is a strong confirmation of a reversal, okay? The New York's momentum box job is usually, not always, but usually to take the previous session. London's job is to take the previous session, okay? They are taking previous sessions liquidity so they can continue moving freely. I hope you understand that. They're taking previous sessions so they can continue moving freely. They took London, they took Frankfurt, they can continue moving, okay? Does everybody understand that when it comes to sessions? Let me check the chat. Yeah, it's nothing. You don't want to trade Frankfurt. Frankfurt is it's shit. <laughs> to be honest, Frankfurt is shit. I know traders who wake up 7 a.m. live. I wake up before everyone and I'm trading from 7. Like, what are you going to do from 7? Get two pips. See, it doesn't make any sense. The, reason, the true direction happens after they take out Frankfurt. You don't want to sell it here. You don't want to buy it here. It's not giving you. They, so there, there are exam. There are excuses. Frankfurt will sometimes just shoot off. I think today, today. Okay, not even today. But sometimes you can just shoot off. But you can obviously hear, see here that Frankfurt high has been taken out alongside with Asia high. Price decided to reverse. Everything during this London momentum box will get respected. So if even if you took, even if you're taking order block stuff, even though I don't, I do not recommend it, even if you took order block stuff, you would be all right because you know this has to be respected. And again, like I said, nine, it doesn't have to be nine. It can be 9.15, it can be whatever, you can sell it at 9.45, it can be 8.45, it doesn't have to be 9. Except, same thing as 14.30, even though you can see here, if you just sold it based on 14.30, you would be quite all right. Even, even just selling it on 14.30, last two days, you would be quite all right. But it doesn't usually happen around 14.30, maybe 14.35, 14.40, 14.45, 14.15, it, it, it depends, it depends. Did they take the previous session? Did they do this? Did they do that? Where did this come from? What's the liquidity on left and stuff like that? Another thing I wanted to discuss is, how do I delay this? Just a sec. All right. Let me just set the indicator again. Just a second, guys. All right. 30 minutes time frame. Another thing I wanted to discuss is momentum box as future POIs. You will see that where they hide, where, where the momentum happens, that can act as a future supply, strong supply or demand or POI, depends how you look at it. 
but it will be a strong supply and demand for POI in the future. You can see an example here. Somewhere around this area here, this is where you're gonna look for your POIs, okay? This is where you're gonna look for your POIs. Somewhere due inside of a momentum box. Nothing here to be searching for a POI. Just those momentum box will give you a future POI, okay? This is a future POI, understand? Okay. The, if you're wondering between, if you're choosing different kind of POIs, choose the one that's inside of a momentum box. Okay. I'm trying to go on one hour so we can see it better. Okay. Sorry, guys. I'm not using TradingView that much. So bear with me. You can see the, the future POI is inside of a momentum box. Why did this spike here? Because they didn't take Frankfurt slow. If they didn't take Frankfurt low, like I said, for a few days, they still have to take Frankfurt slow. There are liquidity areas here that need to be taken out. They are leaving liquidity behind. They're not taking out John or Evans. They're not taking anyone out. They are going for liquidity that's left behind. I'm usually trading four hours and daily and stuff like that. So let me just show you a liquidity examples. Where's today? So liquidity examples, where would you find liquidity? Liquidity is usually around areas like, where is it, sorry. Uh, not using trading view, sorry guys. So liquidity is usually around areas where you see those four wicks on four hours, four hours wicks have a strong liquidity inside of them. This for me is liquidity that needs to be taken out. The first wick that goes into imbalance zone is liquidity that needs to be taken out. This is liquidity area that needs to be taken out. In the future, I'm expecting this to be taken out and this to be taken out. Why? Because they probably left some kind of Asia low, Frankfurt high, something they left inside of these wicks, okay? There's also imbalance if you want to count that, but inside of these strong wicks, there has to be liquidity that needs to be taken out. After they have taken it out, the price will go down, okay? You can see liquidity obviously here. You can see liquidity obviously here. This is where I saw that off based on something over here. Let me just delete this to make it easier. Okay, so I saw based on this, after it's taken out this liquidity, I saw GJ here. I think I posted it. I saw GJ here. I also bought GJ, but he kicked me out. I also bought GJ around this area and I was expecting it, sorry, to go above this area, this area, and this area for my final take profit, but he kicked me out and then decided to take, go higher. But you can see they are going after their liquidity. They're not going after anyone. They're just going after their own liquidity. Maybe it's liquidity from previous session. I really don't know in a lot of time frame, you can check it. Maybe it's Frankfurt that has left unmitigated Maybe there is Asia high, Asia low. I'm not sure, but you need to check it. But it's definitely around those wicks that are going back into that are going back into imbalance areas. First wick that goes into imbalance area is a liquidity. Is liquidity, all right? Let me find you a cleaner example. Cleaner, cleaner, cleaner example. Let's say this one. First wick that goes into imbalance area is POI here, okay? It needs to be taken out. This is fresh liquidity. You can probably take it based on this, okay? Fresh liquidity here. You can take your trade based on this, okay? First week that goes into imbalance area here, it needs to be taken out in the future, okay? First week that goes into imbalance, sorry. First week that goes into imbalance area is liquidity. Once it's cleared out, you can look for sales. You can look for sales. You can look for sales, okay? First week that goes into imbalance area needs to be cleared out. 
you can look for sales. This is also a type of liquidity. People know it as breakout, right? People know it as breakout. This is just liquidity. The breakout, it is a breakout, but it's a breakout because they're clearing out liquidity. They just, they just want to clear the liquidity so they can move higher or lower, depending, okay? But this is the sign where you're going to look for reversals. If you're interested in finding out why go on a lower time frame, look for specific times when did this happen and you will find your own reversal, okay? There is another thing I wanted to mention and that's, let me just clear all of this. Let me go on a lower time frame, 15 minutes. How do I? When it comes to, I don't know how many of you are familiar with daily opens. I use daily open a lot and daily open is something for me that's giving me a strong confirmation. Sometimes I tr take trades just based on daily open as uh, like literally I have two confirmations and I will take it just because it took daily open, okay? Depends, but just based on daily open, price will reverse. It's a strong, strong confirmation of reversal, okay? It doesn't always tend to happen, but you will see if price took daily open, it will give you a reversal. It will give you a reversal. Here, price took it, a reversal, okay? What's this happening? Just a second. Sorry, somebody was calling me. Trying to find your good examples, such as maybe this one. I wouldn't take this one, but just based on just based on daily opens, there are additional confirmation for reversals. If you are an intraday trader, if you're looking for daily open to be taken out, you can find your reversal. Of course, it has to align with the timings I just gave you. 14.30 till 16, 9.30 till 10.30, and London close 5 p.m., somewhere around 5 p.m. If it's taken all of that, and it's also taken daily open, you can look for reversals. There is another thing you can use, and that's, sorry, there is another thing you can use, and that's previous, yesterday's high, yesterday's low. If yesterday's high and yesterday's low has been taken out, that's even a stronger confirmation for reversal. Let me go on one hour, you can see it clear, okay? If it's been taken out, you can look for reversal. Not always, it has to align with different confirmations. Where did this come from and stuff like that? Is there liquidity over here, blah, blah, blah. But it has to take yesterday's high, yesterday's low, so you can look for reversal. It doesn't have to, but if, it's take, if it takes it, look for reversal, okay? Yesterday's high, yesterday low is a strong sign of reversal. There is also weekly high and weekly low, which is the strongest sign of reversal. And if that's taken out, most definitely look for taking a trade, okay? Trying to find you a good example. Let me go four hours. Yesterday's, uh, sorry, weekly high, weekly low has been taken over here. This is a strong confirmation, even a swing move for rever reversal, okay? If it took it here, I would look for reversal. It took it on yesterday's high, yesterday's low. It took it here on yesterday's high, yesterday's low. You can look for reversal. Maybe here, I'm not quite sure. It doesn't look like, but if you think it took it, look for reversal. Took it here, look for reversal. Took it here, beautiful example of yesterday's high, yesterday's low, been taken out alongside with weekly high, weekly low. This is a swing move just based on those two confirmations, okay? Taken out, look for reversal. If it's inside of it, no need to trade, but if it's taken out, you can look for a swing move, okay? Took it out, swing move to the downside. Took it out, you can look to buy, okay? You don't have to have this, to have chart cluster like this. I usually prefer just take looking at daily opens because daily opens are a good sign of reversal. All of this would be based on sell just because it took daily opens. Based on buy because it took daily open. 
based on buy because it took daily open, daily open, daily open has been taken out numerous times. This is just a buy, okay? Daily open, skull buy, daily open, skull sell, okay? Daily open, taken out, sell. Daily open, taken out, buy. Just based on that, you can look for your trade, okay? Of course, we'll give you entry how to take how to take the trade actually, but you can see just based on sessions, just based on daily opens, this is a strong confirmation. Me personally, I use daily open. I don't use weekly high, yesterday's high, but I use daily open and I use Frankfurt sessions and timings like that to find my scalp trades. Okay. Everybody understands that. So do you guys have session, this session market up on MT4? No, we don't have it for MT4. What is your typical time frame for it? When it comes to swings, I just do four hours and daily. I take my trades based on four hours. Um, we'll, we'll go over that later in the day, uh, maybe tomorrow or something like that. I'm not quite sure. But when it comes to scops, uh, I don't go lower than five minutes, usually, usually 15 minutes, because on 15 minutes, you can see everything already. There is no need really to go on a lower time frame than 15 minutes. Even on 15 minutes, if you are really keen to get those uh, small stop losses or big RR, you can just take it from 15 minutes and you will still have small stop loss. Okay, just know where your liquidity is. Just know where liquidity is. Wait for a candle to close. If a candle prints below this Asia low, I know that price will go down. If candle prints below, uh, if candle gives me a rejection, I know the price will reverse. The, the, you still need to look at, sorry, let me get someone in the room. There is still, there is always a component of price action knowing the candlesticks inside bars, outside bars, and stuff like that, doji bars, and stuff. you always need to have that. I'm not denying that. You always need to know if price is rejecting, what's inside bar, what's outside bar, stuff like that, what's doji bar, hammer bar, and stuff like that, shooting stars. It's always good to know that, those kind of things, but only looking at sessions and understanding where liquidity is, you, you can definitely have a good, good, good trade. Okay. When it comes to swings, these momentum boxes will represent future POIs. When it comes for intraday, wait for those sessions to be taken out, wait for those timings to be taken out. Sometimes you will see an example where price didn't take Asia low. I'm trying to find an example. It didn't take Asia low, London's high. Uh, sorry, it didn't take... Um, London's high, uh, London's high, Asia's high, and didn't take London's high again, that means this is a strong liquidity that needs to be taken out. Like we said, there is liquidity inside of these areas that needs to be taken out. If you are looking for a buy, definitely put your take profit around these areas, okay? Also, another thing is, this is a future POI, like I said. Future POIs are inside of a momentum box, specific times with that hold the highest volume, 9 to 10 to 14 30 till 16 0, 0. Okay. Anybody got any questions? You all understood that, right? What if London respects frontal lows and gives entries? Would you take it in the time zone? Great stuff. What if London respects Frankfurt's low? and gives entry, would you take EU, for example, or Euro USD? Let me, let me, let me find it. How do I, okay. Sorry guys, I'm not using this. <clears throat> uh, which day, today? I'm talking about today. Oh, today, okay. 15 minutes, let me see. Oh, this one, this honestly would be the toughest one ever. You probably don't want to tra trade, right? If you see this. If you see Frankfurt's high, Frankfurt's low, hasn't been taken out. I'm, honestly, there is no point to trade this momentum box. All pairs. I don't see anything here. Even though 
in in some way its own demand level is still strong and you can still look for POY inside of it. But for me personally, I wouldn't trade it. Here's the thing, guys. It's like, it, if it's it didn't not, take anything. Maybe once this is taken. Yeah. If Go it's on. not clear, then you just don't take it. Like it needs to be, it needs to be clear, you know? Like, yeah, like so I'm trying to say. think of like, hey, how, how do I, if this move happens, like look for a model, look for a setup. Like if it doesn't make sense, then there's no point to even look at it. Like if it's gonna confuse you and you're like, oh, I don't, I don't get like what's going on here. Does this need to be taken? Da, 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 da. Like no, just just look for the clear models and setups. Like the goal is not to take every single movement in the market. It's to take the highest probability ones that are clear, that you understand, that are simple, that you can execute without any hesitation. Yeah, you can see it. It it, it, it really doesn't make any sense to take this. If it didn't take it, maybe if this happened. If not, I'm just going to skip it. Maybe if this happened, if not, I'm just going to skip it. Happened later on in New York. You can still see London close giving you a reversal. So it's kind of all right. Um, another example is here. It took Frankfurt's low. Maybe you can look for reversal. It took Frankfurt's and Asia's high. Maybe you can look for reversal. But to be honest, I really don't know what's going on with uh, EU lately. I stopped trading it two months ago because it, it's it's everybody's trading EU these days, so I'm staying away from it. It's 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 not a good pair for me personally to be trading it. I don't know why everybody started trading it, but it, it's just it doesn't show me anything. For last two months, I don't I didn't see anything on it. It's just very weird, weird looking pair lately. Yeah, was Anybody have questions? Yeah. You have any questions about this? What the fuck is this? Look at the EU. EU is just, just stay away from this, this guy. It, it's not normal. FXCM is clearer, yeah, much clearer. For me personally, why I don't use trading view is because uh, if I'm using I'm using IC and if I'm using IC, everything I see on IC I will take based on IC. I'm using C Trader to analyze. I'm using C Trader to take the trade. I don't want to trade based on trading view and then switch to IC on C Trader. You understand? It's easier for me, much easier, much simpler to take trades on the same platform I see it. Anybody got any more questions? And like I said, try try putting same colors on your candlesticks. You will see direction is much more clearer. There is no messing up with your own uh, buy, sell. This candlestick is bullish. This candlestick is bearish. I don't think they really care about that. And it's much, much easier to see direction, like I see. I, stum I sometimes, I, a lot of times I use uh, inside bar and it's even finer example of seeing uh, good direction, but it can be complicated for everybody. But anyways, same kind of things, much easier. Trading on MT4, MT5, instead of going to trading view is much, much easier. You can even back test on MT4 these days. If you're not using uh, order blocks, what defines your pivot point or reversal zone where you want to take a trade? Or is that it? Uh, we'll talk about that later on. But you should know for me, if I'm not using, let me just take this out. Sorry. I'm going to move to a different pair. Uh, I don't like this one. I'm going to move, let's go to GU. Uh, for me, if I see price taking out liquidity, then that would be my point of reversal. Sorry. This is liquidity. This is liquidity that hasn't been taken out. Price will give me a reversal. If you are trying to identify fresh liquidity, it usually looks something like this. This is liquidity. And then I'm talking about H4 time frame, daily time frame, weekly time frame. This is liquidity. Sorry. And then 
this is fresh liquidity. This liquidity has taken this liquidity. You can narrow down your POI if you're, you're looking for POI inside of this. This is fresh liquidity. So it will get respected, if you know what I mean. For example, here, liquidity, liquidity being taken out, this is fresh liquidity. Let me, let me on, on this one, just a second. Uh, somebody got kicked out again. All right, I'll put it in. But you understand that this is fresh liquidity. You can put your stop loss here and trade it like this. If you want to take this kind of trades, but I don't really do that. But you can see liquidity, fresh liquidity, hasn't been taken out, needs to be taken out. You can look for your reverses inside of this liquidity. Okay. Uh, where do I get them in? Participants. There you go. Uh, you understand what I'm trying to say? But how do you use indicators on C Trader and MT5? You can download. Uh, there was indicators to download. Uh, I use I sessions. You, there was different kind of indicators you can download, and you can set it up for momentum box. Okay. If liquidity liquidity areas uh, liquidity areas they you know why this wicks you know why this wicks happen why the, the, sometimes they go down reject and go higher because there is probably liquidity around this area here let me go one out there is liquidity somewhere around here that they have to clear out before they can move I would recommend everyone after this call to go on. Uh, whatever time frame you want, it doesn't have to be H4, but any time frame you want and find those liquidity areas that have been taken out and gave you a reversal, okay? Liquidity needs to be taken out. First week that goes into imbalance area is liquidity. Once it's cleared, you can look for reversal. Week that's left unmitigated needs to be taken out, okay? Those are signs of liquidity areas. If you know where liquidity lies, you will, you will have a good, good, good trades. Liquidity areas that has to be taken out, maybe liquidity areas that have to be taken out, and then you can look for reversal. And then if it's inside of those timings, you can most definitely draw a trend line, supply and demand, and know this will be respected. Liquidity that needs to be taken out, fresh liquidity left hanging, this can be taken as a trade. I don't know if you understand me. Let me see if this worked out. I would probably take this. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't matter. It kind of did, but it would take you out and break even. Anyways, you understand what I'm trying to say? Okay, I started this. This is also by slow similar to moments once you got this. Yeah, they're not taking uh, anyone out. They're just going after liquidity that, that they left from previous sessions. So for example, this, sorry, this would be liquidity that needs to be taken out after liquidity has been taken out, they can move price down. This is liquidity that needs to be taken out so they can go higher, okay? Now the only matter is how you're gonna identify direction and we're gonna talk about tomorrow that tomorrow. But for now, understand where liquidity is, where it lies, okay? Understanding those kind of things will give you, will show you a good, good way to take a reversal, even for swings, okay? Liquidity taken out. This is fresh liquidity. You can look for your trade inside of these areas here. Okay. I would probably close it based on this liquidity. This is liquidity that's been left out and needs to be taken out. Just keep in mind that everything needs to be taken out. After everything is being taken out, that's it. You can look for your trade. 
But before that, don't go into a trade until liquidity has been taken out. First week that goes into imbalance area is liquidity. After that area has been taken out, I will look for my reversal. Not based on some order block or whatever here, I will base it on liquidity. Okay, that's how I base my trades on H4. Also, if I see something on H4, I'm gonna take it on H4. I'm not moving to any time frames or anything. I see it on H4, I take it on H4. That's for me personally. Okay, you can even move to one hour, why not? But for me personally, I stay on H4. Uh, I got kicked out, so I don't know. Yeah, it does. You only trade London. No, I trade everything, but I take. I don't take that much trades uh, during week. I take like, I only took two trades this week. I don't know if you follow me on IG, but uh, IG is just, I'm flipping uh, account on gold. So that's just based on flipping. But for me, for me, when it comes to swings, I take, maybe three, four, five trades per week, not even that, maybe three. And then I hold it for, I don't know, week, two weeks. Uh, I don't know about F, I don't know how much, how many trades he takes, but for me, like I said, on swings three, three to five, I would say. The more, the less trades you take, the better win rate, trust me. <laughs> I take like one, two trades a day, sometimes zero. Um, yeah, you don't have to trade every day. That's that's foolish to trade every day. Yeah. You just need to wait for a setup. If you're trying to trade every day, you're most likely not nailing it. I don't know well, about, you know, I don't trade one pair. I trade four, four pairs. I don't know about him. Five with gold, if you want to count gold. I trade uh, gold in the uh, NAS and US 30 and GJ and EJ. Those are the only ones I trade. And I don't really trade EJ that much, uh, mostly GJ. And if you're, if you're, if you're taking like three, four trades a day, you're not doing it right. You know, you got to, you got to understand that like the market has to set up and it needs to, to create a setup for you to take a trade and it doesn't create a setup every single day, especially for a big move. So if you want like a big giant move, like you're going to have to be patient for it. If you want yeah, small wait, moves. Wait for yeah. times, wait for those times. Yeah. Any other questions guys, before we wrap it up? So um, tomorrow we're going to do um, our QMs, SNR, and trend lines, and this is gonna really it's gonna it's gonna make life a lot easier once you learn this. You guys will be thoroughly um, surprised. Yeah, it's it's about spotting liquidity. Just for. I would I would go on chart maybe when everything is over, when New York is done, and just try to find liquidity. Which areas do you consider to be liquidity for you? It's really important to know where does it where liquidity is holding for banks. Where do they are gonna take a reversal? Okay, so just try to find why did it reverse from this area? Maybe what's on the left? Is this liquidity is inside of this week a liquidity area? Maybe there is Frankfurt or Asia that hasn't been taken out, so they decided to take it out, take a reversal after they took it out. For time frames, I usually just stay on cage four, like I said, cage four, cage one. You you see everything on page four. You see everything on daily time frame. But if you're flipping, I'm gonna show you how to do that. If you're flipping, yeah, definitely go on. You can go on lower time frame for sure. All right. Any more questions before we close it? All right. 
Cool. Cool. All right, guys. See you tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. I'm yeah. And there is an indicator in a in a in a, in a room in a Telegram group. Yeah, it'll be in a in a PDF. Yeah, yeah. Just find the indicator in. Uh, I think Stefan uh, posted it in a, in a group. You can just find it under uh, under links, I believe. It should be there somewhere. <laughs> All right, guys. See you. See you, guys.